it's easily the government begins to tell us what our narrative is. They define our experience for us. They call the relocation centers, assembly centers. They called us evacuees. They called us um, on, on the notice instructions to all persons of Japanese ancestry, it says uh, they're addressing aliens and non-aliens. So what's a non-alien? <laughs> <laughs> that was sprinkled all through the, the history books and whatever. And even in our own community, we have difficulty using the true language. People uh, um, uh, shudder when we say concentration camp. Uh, but if you look at the Webster's uh, de dictionary definition of concentration camp, it's a, it's a military compound guarded by uh, military for political prisoners, often based on race. Now, the camps that we were in were not death camps uh, like the Jews suffered. They were definitely concentration camps. We were not evacuees. You know, evacuees are people who are being rescued. You know, there's a flood or something like that. Uh, and uh, you get relocated when you got a new job, right? And they're going to help you move and get your hotel and all of those things. Uh, so uh, part of the importance of helping and supporting documenting these stories is for us to reclaim our narrative, to be able to say, this is my story. Uh, this is the story of my experience. And uh, so there's nothing more wonderful than having a library support an event like this. I want to just close with I'll show you something really funny. I've been doing the, this film was made 10 years ago. And, and yeah. I don't color my hair anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't see very well, so I... <laughs> One, 142% you know, magnified. <laughs> guy was here earlier today and said, oh, I'd like to interview your brother. My brother said, no way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there's lots of uh, reluctance. So um, I think 
we had the opportunity to hear a dialogue that <coughs> is rarely spoken, but I have to tell you this. In all of the workshops that I did, over 100 of these workshops, that issue came up every single time. Who did what and who was right and who was wrong within our own community. Regarding the gender thing, you know, it happened in this situation. It just evolved that way. Um, you know, they're pretty expressive guys. Um, so I, I can't really say why that happened. Yeah. It didn't happen in all the groups. Yeah. Yes? Yeah, in regards to the uh, one thing questions, I think it was 27, 28. Uh, how long did they have to determine, you know, like your answer? And then second part, what would you have answered? Hell no, I won't go. <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean, would you have said no, no, or yes, yes? Or it's easy to say, yeah, you know, now, now, now I, exactly. I don't, yeah. And, and here's the thing, too, is uh, I've looked at the choices that people made in the prison camps, depending, uh, based on the developmental stage of their life in which they were confronted with this question. So if you were young parents with small children, you weren't likely to say yes, yes. If you said yes, yes, you were very vulnerable to being not just to volunteer, but to be drafted out of the prison camps to go fight in Europe. Uh, if you were uh, a young teenager, 17, 18, 19 years old, and wanted to get out, and this was going to be a ticket out, that was another option. Of course, there was also the fierce loyalty that this is how we're going to prove that we're good citizens. Now, you need to know, too, that when these young men were uh, we, you know, on R and R, came back, had to come through the prison bars, the prison, the uh, barbed wires, to come and visit their parents and their siblings uh, while they were in the prison camp. So it's easy for me to say, you know, and I, I was at Berkeley during the '60s and <laughs> wore daisies in my hair, did all of that, and my parents would call me every night and say. We do not want to see your name in the newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> they, they were really afraid. And uh, so then when I went home, that's when my mother said, you need to know that um, we actually renounced our American citizenship as a result of the uh, camp experience. None of us knew that until that time. And I said, why didn't you tell me before? Because I'm going, how to the people? <laughs> My mother said is we were afraid we would never really understand why we made that decision. So the, our, the second documentary from a silk cocoon is about that whole yes, yes, no, no, renunciation of American citizenship experience that they went through based on 180 letters that my parents exchanged while they were in separate prison camps that I found after they had passed away. I was wondering why she was writing her diary on her home. <laughs> so I, I used the, the, the censored letters. You could see over here that they uh, cut out uh, big portions of the letters. And some of the letters, when I opened up, they were just flaps. Um, so, and they knew that somebody was reading the, their letters that they were exchanging. Uh, but also, they had their own personal uh, documentation. My mother wrote down every single meal from the time they were held in the prison camps. So, um, hard to say, you know. Uh, I was just, uh, I have never found the answer. Were they, uh, when these questions were asked of them, were they given right there, or did they have? Oh, no, they were, they, the notice was posted, okay. and also in these newsletters, the ones that you saw samples of, instructions there, and, and there were deadlines. Now, uh, they were so poorly written that it created a double bind for many people. People were afraid to even answer it. But if you refused to answer, or if you said uh, conditional, any, all of that was considered no-no. If you didn't give a clean yes, I will defend this country and go to war, and uh, yes, I will uh, uh, forswear loyalty to the Japanese emperor. And, uh, See, that was a double by question because it implied that you had loyalty to the emperor, right? And that you're going to force merit. And then for many of the Isis who were not allowed citizenship, the first generation, um, they were afraid that if they renounced their American citizenship, I mean, their Japanese uh, loyalty, they would be without a country. 